vitamin C, we've given up to 70,000 milligrams IV. Uh, typically, we'll start with 20,000. So yeah, he has Parkinson's there. You can see uh, the shuffle when he walks. Um, you see he has a very hard time turning. And that's actually Dr. Perlmuter. He's the one who came up with this uh, protocol of IV glutathione. Again, see the shuffling, see the posture, see how slow he's, uh, you know, he's just not able to ambulate well. So that's, you know, it's a pretty severe Parkinson's uh, on medications. So now here's the IV glutathione, 30 minutes after 3,000 milligrams IV push over 10 minutes. You can see he's really uh, able to walk much better. That's pretty cool. So we've had a, you know, since this, we've had probably six different patients we've treated. I'll show you another one of ours at the end. But you can see it's really, that's just within 30 minutes of getting the shot. And you'll see here at the end of uh, one hour. So you see his speech is much better also. Is uh, one hour later. <laughs> so that's pretty neat. Uh, just with one IV glutathione shot, um, you then work on building their own glutathione. Um, so that the shot, the effect of the shot lasts longer and longer. So initially it only lasts like about two days. Um, after about a week of therapy, it'll last about a week. And eventually you build up so they just need one every three months to the point where they don't need any, anything else. And then you start taking them off their medications. So next is uh, Extreme Oxygen O2, which is called EWOT. It has a tank where it's 100% oxygen. And then on the side is high altitude oxygen. It's the oxygen at 20,000 feet, which is the base camp of the Himalayas. You walk along on the treadmill, um, breathing the 100% oxygen. Normally your capillaries and venules are a little bit closed. So you're not able to fully use oxygen. As you start to jog, um, you switch to the high altitude oxygen for about a minute, and then you switch back to 100% oxygen. And that's able to open up those capillaries 100%. And that's really uh, quite a remarkable thing. You always hear you can only use 20% of your brain. And why is that? Nobody ever asked. But if you actually think about it, it's because there's not enough. Your brain uses 70% of the oxygen metabolism. So normally, those capillaries and venues are closed off. So when you're able to open that 100%, you'll start using parts of your brain you may, ne may never have used. And we've seen just amazing uh, recovery with that. It hard to. Thanks. 
So heart math. Heart math is one of the key parts. We're normally 100% in our heads, thinking thoughts. And the key to healing, if you think of stress or non-stress, or you think of healing or diseasing, or if you think of being in your head or in your heart. And heart math is actually able to measure what percentage you are in your head or in your heart or diseasing or healing. And that's really a cool, uh, cool technique. It measures how, like right here, you're 27% red, so that's 20% in your head. And as you're able to shift that, I believe if you could live 80% of the time in the green, you would have no disease. This is a, one of the most incredible people we ever measured. She, had, she could go 100% green for hours. I've been dealing with uh, high blood pressure issues for quite a few years. I really don't like being on any kind of drug. I've always tried to live my life as naturally uh, a way as I could. Recently, I, I, I met uh, Dr. Hildron, and working with him, uh, he's helped me find uh, other ways to, to manage my, my blood pressure. It was fluctuating for quite a but even with uh, high blood pressure medication, I'm st still wasn't able to manage it, uh, keep it in a normal range. But now that's just, just an amazing change. Because of that, I think my blood pressure is back to a uh, more normal range and I'm bleeding again. Uh, I got my life back and uh, I feel like, uh, like I did before. So the reason those are all blood pressure statements, that's for the support of the book. So next is EECP. ECP uses a series of blood pressure cuffs to uh, contract and cause what's called a pulsation wave. That pulsation wave is um, able to activate your stem cells 800%. Um, people don't realize, but you have stem cells already. When we did stem cell research, uh, first we you know, pulled them out of people's bone marrow, then out of people's fat, and eventually you found that, no, you have stem cells already in your body. And just by activating those, your body's able to heal. If any of you broke your arm right now, you would go to the hospital, they'd put you in a cast. The cast does not heal your arm. All it does is hold it still so the stem cells can come in and reform your bone. If you think of how hard it is to form a bone, that's much harder than whatever else is bothering you. But the stem cells are not activated. They Basically what's bothering you is not enough of an event to get the stem cells to activate. So we found by activating the stem cells, whatever's wrong with you gets healed. And I think that's really one of the key. Combining this with the EWA, the oxygen, that's able to give enough energy to the stem cells so you can heal. Again, sauna is also a very big part. After you get your IV, you go through all these stations. And at the end of the IV, it takes about three hours. Then you go in the sauna. The sauna releases toxins. People don't realize, but each sweat gland is like a little kidney. And you're able to excrete toxins through there. I'm 50 years old, and in 2010, I was diagnosed with hypertension. So uh, at the time, I had been prescribed uh, medication to lower my blood pressure. Good job. Well, Val's here. You. <laughs> and I'm no longer on it. <laughs> Oh, so next, uh, so biocharger. Um, biocharger is an interesting device based on Tesla technology. Um, it's actually able to produce a current of 700,000 volts into the room. Um, Tesla discovered a way for your body to be able to absorb electrical energy. Um, here at the bottom, you can see, so normally a cell, a healthy cell, has 55 millivolts of electricity, of energy. A six cell will drop all the way down to 15, 
and that's especially cancer cells. Cancer cells function around 15 millivolts. What the biochar is able to do is able to reintroduce energy into your cells up to 75 millivolts. And at 75 millivolts, any cell can heal, sort of supercharge them. So usually you'll sit next to the device for about 15 minutes and absorb that energy. Like a lightning bolt would work too, but it'll kill you. This is just a way to figure out a way to, so you can actually use the energy. Um, you can actually measure. So at the Los Alamos labs, they have this uh, interesting little device here where you just put your hand, it's a silver and a copper coil uh, plate, and it can measure your milliamperage. So most people are at 55. Because the biocharger sits next to my son's room, and I do it every day, our energy was actually 100 millivolts. So it really does work. Next is the Jana God uh, crystal healing bed. There's Jana God with Oprah. Um, the crystal bed you lie under, it has crystals that are electrically activated. And as you sit there, uh, there's sort of different layers of what you can believe happens. On a first layer, it gives you a very relaxing feeling. On a second layer, they say it balances your chakras. On a third layer, there's a feeling that there's sort of entities that can come in and actually heal you through the crystals. Uh, Kevin is a unique individual. He actually does massage, and he can actually move your energy uh, for healing. And Paco is very interesting also. He was actually a uh, US Marine. Then he became a Catholic priest for 17 years. So if you think of hearing confessionals for 17 years, this guy has heard it all. <laughs> and then uh, he became a, a counselor. So he has a very unique perspective and can almost relate to everybody on a certain level to find there's always issues under the issues. Um, we then recommend people, once you're finished with your sauna, you go on a labyrinth uh, walk. It's actually my daughter there. And uh, by doing the labyrinth, that's sort of a meditation. Uh, so I'll talk about food a little bit. This is food. <laughs> In spite of what's advertised to you, that's what food looks like. Fruits and vegetables. Organic fruits and vegetables. That is the best you can eat. Okay, that's the best stuff we got on earth. We also have a juicer. So that's actually, we uh, work with Gerson uh, therapy people a bit. And there is no better way to get extra nutrition than juicing. There's no possible way you could eat all the stuff that's in one juice. It's just, you just can't get it in yourself. And the third thing we talk about is uh, what we call star butts. So coffee enemas. <laughs> uh, sounds horrible. <laughs> but um, it's actually, it's not that bad. So basically you fill, you put coffee, eight ounces of coffee, and then you add 24 ounces of water. And um, you hold it for about 10 minutes. And what Dr. Gerson actually found was that the coffee activates your own liver's glutathione. And you can boost your own glutathione levels 18 times. We have nothing else that can do that. Even injecting glutathione directly into you is not as effective as that. So um, you know, depending on what disease you're working with, we have people do as many as three a day. We have, usually we recommend just uh, twice a week. Uh, so exercise, unfortunately you need to exercise. Like I say, if you breathe, you need to exercise. There's an, a great movie on uh, Netflix now. It's called uh, Sunrise to Sunset. And it follows the Dalai Lama for one day. He's one of the most enlightened beings on earth. And in that film, you will see he wakes up at 4 a.m., he does his little prayers, and then he goes on the treadmill for 30 minutes. If the Dalai Lama hasn't figured out a way to get out of exercising, there's no hope. <laughs> you have to exercise. The other thing is rest. You need to rest. People don't, don't factor in rest. Um, you know, I always, I always make the joke that God created the world in six days, and he rested. <laughs> we don't need to rest. We need to take our day of rest. Um, the advantage of meditation is that it's sort of supercharged rest. So 10 minutes of meditation equals about two hours of sleep. Um, coexistence. You know, the, the, we all have, we all face what I call our walls. During the week when people stay with us, or two weeks, 
walls will come up and you need to adapt to what you're doing. And you know, it's all good, it's just which road do you want to pick? So here we talk about our goals. I've just been ridiculously lucky with just getting to meet all these people. So I met Babaji, Norm Sheely here in the middle. Um, Norm Sheely founded the American Holistic Medical Association in 1967. He was actually a neurosurgeon. Really, you know, the most, uh, you know, he founded the whole holistic movement. And um, he, we got lucky that he was in Santa Fe. He actually came over to our house and now realize he knows every holistic doctor in the world knows Norm Shield. He's the father of the whole thing. And Norm looked at our program and I showed him everything we were doing. And he said our program was the most advanced program he's ever seen. And you know, to hear that from him was pretty cool. So uh, here's Eckhart Tolle at the bottom. I got to spend uh, uh, three days with him and his uh, partner, his wife, sort of. And uh, that was pretty interesting. Up there in the middle is the real Patch Adams. I got to spend a week with him. He's really a clown, he really dresses like that. <laughs> uh, I actually got to meet the Dalai Lama for an hour. And I've been to Brazil, India, Washington. So I've been lucky to be able to see all these things or else I probably wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so this last part, these last uh, few slides. The first thing I want you to realize is that this, so we're entering the energy part. We, it feels like this is real, but it's not. The, the reality of quantum physics is that they have found that the atom has an electron spinning around it and it has matter in the second. Realize the distance between the center to the electron, if it was like, let's say me right now, it's 40 miles away. 99.999% of everything is space, okay? So all of this you think you see are really holographic projections of photons. Now that's hard to swallow, <laughs> but that's what quantum physics has shown us. And as you start to shift into the real understanding of how matter works, or that it doesn't matter, you're able, that's where actually miracles can occur. That's from the Matrix movie. So his point is making is that we believe we're breathing air, we believe we have bodies, but the truth is it, it's, that's not how it is. So there's principles of quantum mechanics. Now this is what they've proven, that you can only measure an electron, if you measure its position, you lose, you cannot measure its speed. And if you measure its speed, you cannot measure its position. And that's a big, that's a big deal. So they did an experiment, and what they found is that if, it's sort of a unique experiment, but the bottom line is they took an uh, electron. Oh, here you go. It is a demonstration of the object wave duality of all matter, as demonstrated by the most powerful scientific theory ever conceived, quantum mechanics. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but basically, if you, if you shoot a particle into a, a, a device that can measure it, if you do not look at it, if no one observes it, it, it shoots through as a wave. You get a wave function. If you look at it, just the act of you looking at it or something measuring it will convert that into a particle. Your consciousness changes the reality. And that's the, really the concept that they were able to show with that. And that's, you know, absolutely proven in physics. Here, I won't have time for this one, but so here how 10 dimensions actually work. If you go on YouTube, you can see it. Um, so we're now working with uh, Richard Bartlett of Matrix Energetics. This is sort of a unique guy that was able to figure out, one is to sort of put this whole quantum theory into uh, medical application, and then two is to actually teach it to you. And so if you get a chance to see that, that's pretty. Pretty cool. So here I'm just going to show you some patients that, uh, you know, just here's one we really documented well. So this patient had a 99% block in the neck, stayed with us five weeks. Uh, cholesterol went from 234 to 191. 
HDL went 71 to 60. Lung function went up from 66 to 102. The first day on the treadmill, uh, he was only able to go one minute 34 seconds before he had to stop because he was out of breath. By day 35, he went over 26 minutes. I mean, I don't know of anything that can do that. <laughs> Um, everything else improved, weight, body mass index, resting metabolism, body age, uh, visceral fat, lead, and I'll show you. So here's the, I don't know if you all are, how used to you were looking at these, but here you can see where you have a 99% blockage. Here's the, you, know, you can see the flow. Basically that diagram over there shows you how it should look. And here you can see the bulge of the blockage, 99%, and then over there on the left, you can see it went all the way down to zero. I realized nothing, you know, we never had anything that could do that. So you actually have more pitches, the 99% block, you can see all the way to zero on the bottom left. So when basically the first week it was 99%, at the end of the third week it was down to 70%, from the fourth week it went from 70 to 10%, and in the fifth week from 10 to zero. So the, that patient had a very big uh, emotional breakthrough in the uh, fourth week. So here again, you can see 0%. So my friend Pete, he had a coronary calcium, so he's like us, healthy. He did a coronary calcium score, it was 58. He did 40 uh, days of the program. Coronary calcium went to zero. Bill was in the video, so I won't spend time on him. But he had just all kinds of things. He had parotid gland cancer, which he doesn't have anymore. He had polycythemia vera, which is an uncurable quote-unquote disease, which he does not have anymore. Uh, he has metastatic stage four prostate cancer. When I met him, he came in and he, the oncologist told him he had two weeks to live. Which I always hate when oncologists give the time thing. But uh, it's now been two years. He was the one playing golf in the, in the movie. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue, congestive heart failure. These are just all the things we sort of had time to work on. Atrial fibrillation, somebody was asking me on. So he, uh, Jeffrey came in, he stayed with us, uh, and on the 18th, he had been in chronic atrial fibrillation for like 25 years. And on day 18 of his treatment, he switched, he was on the, the oxygen thing, and his rhythm switched from atrial fibrillation to sinus rhythm, and he's been in sinus rhythm since. Uh, which is you know, pretty amazing, I've never seen that. Uh, so he, he also gave the, uh, he was also one of the videos. So here's our own glutathione guy. So here on the left, uh, this is before. You can see he's, you know, he has to use the cane there to hold himself for balance. You can see you know, so has the mouth. You can see his gait pretty unsteady. He has to use the cane to walk. He's not as bad as the first video. But, uh, so this is one actually in our clinic. And then here, so we gave him 3,000 milligrams of glutathione because he doesn't need the cane anymore. And he's able to walk much better. And this is off his medications. So one of the things that the medications do is they develop a tremor. So this was like only like the third or fourth time we'd done it. By now he's had, uh, I think, 16 treatments. So he doesn't have the tremor anymore and he's completely off all his uh, uh, Parkinson's pills. So this is the last slide here. So just to give you what's, uh, this is on YouTube. It's uh, Braden's uh, video on uh, miracles of healing. Um, this is a hospital in China where they really believe in all this stuff. Um, there's three people standing here on a lady who has bladder cancer. Um, you'll see here on the ultrasound, you see a big giant tumor sitting there on the wall of her bladder. On the left is the reference image. On the right will be the real time um, ultrasound uh, as they're working on her. Basically, three Qigong masters sat, uh, are standing around her. Uh, they're basically telling her, you are healed, is the chant that they're giving. So you can see the tumor there on the right and on the left. So the left is the reference image, and then on the right, as they start doing their chant,
That's pretty cool. <laughs> so you can see what's actually uh, able to happen. So because of the patient's belief and their belief, they're able to actually um, get the tumor to dissolve. So that's a period, a short period of time? Yeah, that fast. So in the realm of energy of that type, there is no time, there is no space. And that's how they're able to do that. So these are just some pictures of our clinic. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, we do do phone consults or Skype consults. Um, and usually we're able just to send out the little kits you need for testing or get any blood tests you may need uh, ordered for you. I'll send you the order sheet. And uh, we're able to, you know, I'm probably following like 50 patients from here um, that I used to see here over there that way. And of course, everyone's always welcome to come out and. Uh, you know, if you're really serious about trying to get better, you know, the, there's nothing better that I know of, uh, actually, in the world um, than our Gemstar program. So that's the story. Thank you. If anyone wants to, I'll just uh, we'll do a few questions, and then uh, later on I'll be outside. I did bring some books. If anyone wants some, uh, twenty dollars. Question. How does your oxygen therapy differ from hyperbaric chambers? Because I know. Yeah, so I, you know, when I started, I was interested in oxygen. So the first thing I started looking at was hyperbaric. We actually had a hyperbaric chamber. Um, hyperbaric raises plasma oxygen two to four times. So red blood cell oxygen 100%, and then the plasma two to four times. Uh, EWOG raises it uh, 10 to 20 times. So it's just a whole exponentially better way to do it. Your body's not designed to absorb oxygen through the skin, which is what hyperbaric is doing. Um, the EWOG uses 100% oxygen, but it uses your own body system to be able to uh, utilize it. So it uses your own breathing and your own exercising to really be able to get it to go. And that's why you see such higher levels of efficacy just in 15 minutes. And that's why you're doing Let's turn those lights back on. Correct, correct. And that's what it works for. Yes? Now, does that work well with diabetic ulcers and with all the complications of diabetic foot diseases when you breathe it in like that? Yeah, absolutely, because the, the problem is, you know, the oxygen getting into your system. So hyperbaric does work, it's just the critical amount seems to be four times normal plasma oxygen. And here we're looking at 10 to 20, it's actually around 16 times plasma oxygen. At 16 times your cells just function. Um, anaerobically, plasma cells run, uh, only use four, produce four ATP from each oxygen molecule. And with oxygen, they produce 36. So that's a nine times difference in energy. And you know, nothing can do that. It's the difference between a bicycle and a Ferrari. Yeah. OK, last question, then I'll do the outside. Yeah. Can you go over the benefits or differences between IV chelation and oral? Yeah, so IV, um, IV is 30 times stronger than oral chelation. So if you're having, and what I, you know, the way we approach it now is if you're actually having yeah. symptoms and you want to get to a symptomless point, then do a, a few IVs until you're symptom free. Once you're symptom free, then you can switch to the oral and continue from there because you're not having any more symptoms until you're completely toxin free. All right, thanks. I'll be outside if you have any more uh, questions and I'll send those. Thanks.